In this video, I'm going to show you how to use WCS to calibrate for location accuracy for wireless client devices. From the WCS main page, click Monitor Maps. Then from the upper right-hand drop-down, choose RF Calibration Models, click Go. From the drop-down, say Create New Model, click Go. Give the new calibration model a name. Then click OK. Click on the name of the new calibration model. Select from the drop-down to Add Data Points. And from there, you select the floor that you're actually adding the data points from, uh, where you're going to be associated as a client device. Click Next. The system will process this information for a moment and display the map. From the map, you have the ability to add point collection methods or linear collection methods. The linear allows you to begin and end at a, at a linear path to collect data in that type of fashion rather than a single point collection. You have the ability to turn off the grid, the APs, the collection points, or suggested collection points. As you are doing the calibration, uh, the data collection, you stand in a single point and basically you're associated to the WCS system with a client device laptop and the system recommends that you stand in a single position but rotate the laptop in order to have the system generate enough information to effectively calibrate the location from where you're standing. I have the Bandwidth Meter Pro indicating that there is information being sent and received from the laptop device that I was using to calibrate the wireless infrastructure. And you can see it's not very much data that's actually being sent and received. And there's really not much of an indicator there that anything's really happening until the collection status actually starts to proceed. But you get no visual display indicating how close you are to being done or whether or not it's really working until the data collection status reaches 100%. And then sometimes it can collect only four packets, sometimes it collects eight packets of information. It really varies greatly and there's nothing really to tell you how close you are to being finished. Each collection point takes approximately two minutes time of standing and rotating the laptop waiting to reach the 100% collection status. You have to calibrate the floor for 802.11b separately from 802.11a, so you would configure your wireless client device to associate specifically on that frequency or particularly associate to an SSID that's only tied to that given radio interface so that you're calibrating for just one frequency at a time. At this point we have finished the calibration. We have selected 329 data points and 400 some odd for the BGN. As you can see we have the overlay of the blue and yellow to make green to cover the entire floor. We can look at the details of the RF calibration and inspect location quality, but I have not calibrated this RF model yet, so I click Calibrate and click Go. It takes some time to actually calibrate the information, but once it's done, then I can actually calibrate the location accuracy or view the location accuracy or voice over wireless accuracy. Also, I want to point out that when you're done collecting data points, there is no other indicator of what you're supposed to do except to click Cancel because you've collected all of the data points that are there. It's auto-saving in the background. There is no Save button before you exit the calibration step before you actually apply the RF calibration model to the floor. So it may make you kind of nervous just to click Cancel because you think you're going to lose all your data, but you're not. It's actually auto-saved in the background, but you don't really know that until you take the step and click Cancel. This was a 34,000 square feet building, and it took me about two hours to calibrate the 2.4 gigahertz frequency and another two hours to calibrate the 5 gigahertz frequency. Each data point location that I calibrated was approximately two minutes in length. It's a very tedious, involved process, and you will be asked a thousand questions about what you're doing because it looks very strange to have a person standing in one spot 
turning a laptop over and, and rotating it around for two minutes at a time. Okay, now I have actually calibrated the RF model that I created. Now I can inspect the location quality. This is 34,000 square feet that had 11 access points deployed in a triangular fashion. And we can see here that we have the best percentage is shown in green. And from the drop down, you can say, well, show me what's within three meters. And the system will refresh the screen and show you where its location accuracy is going to be the best or the worst. You can also choose um, different options from the drop down to, say, percentage of location errors under three meters or two meters. You also have the ability to choose from client types. I'm going to put it back on the 10 meters because that's the Cisco rule of thumb is 10 meters 90% of the time. But you can change the client type to show me the location accuracy for BGN clients or ABGN clients. And you can see over here on the left all of the location calibration points that were collected. From this, we're also able to apply this to the maps. We're going to apply the RF calibration model to the actual floor where we collected the data. We're going to apply the map to the first floor. By default, it has the cubed and walled model that was applied by default by the Cisco WCS solution. So as we apply the new model, the system will think for a moment again and recalibrate the RF prediction that's going to be displayed in WCS according to the RF model that we just collected the data for and are applying to the floor area. So the heat map display will be more accurate because we are sending the information of the client location to the WCS system so that it can much more accurately display client locations as well as the RF heat map within WCS. As you can see, it takes quite a long time to calibrate the new model or apply the new model to the actual chosen floor and for all of the AP predictions to be recomputed. Looks like it's estimated about two and a half minutes, maybe three minutes long. So the calibration model is applied successfully to the chosen maps. So you click OK. At this point, I have a video that I shot that shows exactly what it looks like when you're calibrating a, a single data point collection. And you can see why it looks pretty weird, because you just kind of stand there with your laptop and turn it around and rotate it. There's no real indicator in the WCS location calibration guide to say what exactly you're supposed to do. The only indicator you get on what you're supposed to do with the laptop is the little animated GIF of the guy pirouetting, but that honestly makes me dizzy. So I just kind of turn the laptop around and check it every so often to see if there's any data calibration points that have actually been received. and. I read in the location deployment guide that it helps if the laptop's moving around because it aids in the sending and receiving of data between WCS and the client when the RSSI values change even the tiniest little bit, um, but the location of the laptop doesn't change, but the orientation of the antenna and the RSSI is changing when the laptop's rotated and turned and, and basically spun around. But each location point takes about two minutes. And like I said, for 11 access points and 34,000 square feet, it was two hours to calibrate for the 2.4 gigahertz frequency and another two hours to calibrate for the 5 gigahertz frequency. It is very time consuming and be prepared to answer lots of questions about what you were doing um, because I'm sure people have never seen this before, I mean, let alone a site survey when you actually have all of your signage about what you're doing. But it doesn't really do any good to have a sign on the back of your laptop lid about what you're doing if you're standing there spinning the laptop around and looking generally silly while you wait for the system to actually record enough data to complete a calibration point. So that was how long it took to record one single data point. 
And at this point, we can use WCS to inspect the voice readiness now that we've applied the RF calibration model to the floor. We can also inspect the voice over WLAN readiness and we are able to show for clients either Cisco phones or custom and you can edit the the specifics for a custom phone on what it's expecting and we can also assume you know for max power what does it look like if we're having all of the APs operate at max power or if we change the band that they're operating at do we get better voice quality and you can see it's a red yellow green indicator off to the left indicating that it's voice ready in the green areas but not so much in the, in the yellow or red areas. We are also able to to inspect location readiness from a different place within WCS and this looks a little bit different than the other map that we were using because it says it's either location ready, yes or no. And as you can see, I, I do have the APs deployed in a triangulated fashion, but there's not enough to cover the whole area.